I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone. Thank you, Lord, for this word this morning. I ask Holy Spirit that you would breathe life into this word, that you would give life to this word. And I thank you for this, Lord God. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. And I ask, Lord God, if we're walking in apathy, if we're carrying an apathetic spirit, Lord God, that we would begin to shake that thing off, that we would begin to tear down that stronghold, that we would walk in life and love towards others and be concerned in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. I just declare over you life, wholeness, health, peace, prosperity in every area of your life. Glory to God. i got a lot of scripture this morning. But I want to talk about my vacation a little bit. I went to a place called Tacoma, Washington for, uh, actually it was probably two and a half days I was there. I was there to see my kids, my grandkids, my brother, my sister. I think I spoke about it last week that I was going to be doing that. And uh, I didn't realize that when I went on vacation that God had an assignment for me. He showed me some things there that's not only there, it's here where I live, it's where you live, it's everywhere we live. And God's getting ready to send people from other regions, I don't know what that means, he just told me that, into those areas. And, 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 I'll, and I'll focus on, 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 on things because when we read in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, there are types and shadows of things. They're, they're spiritual pictures. Sodom and Gomorrah was a spiritual picture of apathy. Of what happens when people become apathetic and they begin to, they become so apathetic that it, they don't even notice those things coming in to their, into their midst. And it grieves God's heart. And, and you can see it in our country today that there's a spirit of apathy growing and it's growing strong. And we need to start coming against it. Not everybody's apathetic. I don't believe I'm apathetic. There, there are probably areas of my life that need to be changed that are apathetic. I'm not saying become religious and go out and start a witch hunt. What I'm saying is we need to begin to start praying against strongholds of the enemies that we've allowed the enemy to build. In, in our communities. In our regions. And this weekend was, you know, I went, I went to a church where I wasn't welcomed. Now, one person came to me as I was entering in the, in the property and said hello to me. The first two women that walked by me, I smiled at them. They didn't even look at me. It was like I wasn't even there. I walked down into the church. And they looked at me and turned away. It was like... Not one person welcomed me. They're too busy getting their lattes, getting their 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 drinks, their specialized drinks, and and talking to each other about what was going on in their lives. And then I go, I enter the sanctuary, and there's greeters at the door, and the two greeters are talking to each other. And I had to enter, I had to stop and say hi, and they looked at me. Oh. Hi. Would you like this? And would you like an envelope? Would you like? It's like, no. I was thinking to myself, I'd like to be greeted. And I went and sat down. They didn't say, hey, just find a seat and sit down. They didn't say nothing. I don't even think they said welcome. <laughs> they might have said welcome, but uh, it was only after I introduced myself, basically. I sit down. And I'm thinking, now one person has come up to me. These people are moving around. And pretty soon I see this, this older gentleman. And uh, apparently he's the pastor because people are calling him pastor. And he's walking up and down the aisle. And he's greeting people. And he refuses to even look my way. He's become invisible. And at that point I said, Lord, it is a good thing I am not suicidal. Because if I was, I would think that I wasn't wanted, like it, nobody cared. And, and, I, and I, asked, I mean, the message was good. It was good.
good. It was simple, it was to the point, and it was good. Um, going out the door, one person shook my hand. There was at least 50 people in this place. And then, as I was leaving, I told the Lord, I said, if I was looking for a church, Lord, this wouldn't be the place I'd want to go. You know, those brothers and sisters are probably really friendly to each other because they know each other, because they see each other, you know, maybe several times a week, maybe every single service. They have at least three services a week. It's a pretty large church, and I went to it back in the late 80s. But, uh, if a stranger comes in the door, I only saw one person there that I vaguely remember seeing. So, you know, there's probably been some kind of turnover. Um, and it used to be a lot larger on a Sunday night than what I saw. But what I recall is, if you were a stranger and you come to the door, they would they would uh, stop and shake your hand. And, 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 you know, as you were coming in, they would make sure you felt welcome. And while I was listening to the service, I heard the Lord tell me, that for this very reason, I brought you here. It's like, cool. It's a good message. It's speaking to me. It's about being thankful. It's about being thankful. You know how we're, we're thankful for a minute. <laughs> well, then it's not enough. We want more. And I think it was out of Psalms 137 he was reading. Uh, don't quote me on that. At any rate, uh, or 107, yeah, it was 107, I believe. Um, at any rate, it's about the goodness and the grace of God and what's, what He's doing in our lives and, you know, how we get off track sometimes. Well, at any rate, I don't want to try and replicate His message when I got my own, my own here. And then as I was driving around town, the Lord started speaking to me, and I thought it was my own thoughts, but thinking back on it, it may have been the Lord giving me a picture of hopelessness in this place and an apathy a spirit of ap apathy and, and I was thinking that so many people they see these things all the time they see the drugs they see the prostitution they see the misery in people all the time that it doesn't touch them if they see somebody panhandling they look the other way if they see somebody in need they look the other way But, but what they stop, what they fail to realize is that by looking away and not seeing or, or just having blinders on so you don't see it, you're not allowing yourself to become the Jesus to those people that they might ever only see be that person who is Jesus. Uh, and they may never see Jesus. And you might have just been the only opportunity that they'll ever get to meet Jesus because they have a false religious belief that Jesus was just a good guy. And, and, and his message isn't relevant for today. It was only relevant for then. Or whatever they think. You know, at one point, uh, I didn't believe there was such thing as Christians. I only thought there was one person in the world who could call himself Christian. Whoever proved it to me. And that was my Uncle Gene. And everybody else I thought was hypocrites. And I thought that that we had to do certain things in order to be called Christian. Um, the Lord showed me yesterday that, you know, it's, it's not uh, my perfect speech. It's not because I'm not sinning. The reason why he's called me to this is because I'm willing to go to submit myself to we submit to God, and He raises us up into a position where we can help others. But we got to shirk, shake, and get rid of the apathetic spirit. And, and so, then, the Lord showed me Tuesday morning, I was going to get some coffee. He showed me that He was bringing in missionaries from other regions into this region, to get the body motivated, to get them woke up. I don't know how that looks. But he's going to be doing that on a wide scale because when revival breaks out, 
we need to be able to recognize what God's doing. Not just a couple of us. It might be a couple at first, but it's going to turn into a fireball. It's going to sweep. It's going to consume. <laughs> it's going to burn off. It's going to break people free. Mindsets. You're going to be changed. Glory to God. But he's going to bring missionaries into a place. He had me stop at this lake that... Uh, that's there, and I can't think of the names on Sheridan Street, and blah, 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 blah. At any rate, he told me to go pray, pronounce a blessing over the city. So I did. Got this nice peaceful spot over the water. People were walking back and forth on this trail, and I just began to praise the Lord. I didn't care who was behind me. And then I began to speak prophetically over this, this city, releasing God to do what he wants to do over that city. And the Lord told me Tuesday morning that I was basically a prototype of, of a missionary coming in. I was a prophetic act going into this place. However that looks. And that he is sending missionaries into that place. And that the spirit of Joshua was on me to declare those things. That I came into agreement that it wasn't too big. For God to overcome. And God can overcome those things. And my wife's calling me. Hello? I'm doing my blog. Nope, I just started it. I'm recording it right now. But I'm going to just keep recording. What's going on? What time are you getting off? Okay, love you, bye. And that was my wife. <laughs> she wants to talk to me about something. So she talked to me when I come to pick her up for work. At any rate, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get this thing done today. Uh, definition of apathy is lack of interest, enthusiasm, or concern. How many of us walk in one or more of those areas? Lack of. Lack of. Lack of. Think about that. Let the Holy Spirit witness to you and minister to you in the areas that you're apathetic. Apathy and apathetic are the same thing. We need to begin to start stepping out. We need to become intercessors. And, and Sodom and Gomorrah is a tight. Of spiritual apathy where you allow things in when we should have shut them off to begin with um, and we're seeing a lot of that today and this isn't about the judgment it's about when we step out from underneath God's hand of protection we end up being exposed there's no protection there and all kinds of things can come our way and we begin to reap what we're sowing and this is what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. They reaped what they sowed. And in the spiritual sense, if we're apathetic, all kinds of things can come in. And they were apathetic and all kinds of things came in. And Genesis 18, 22 through 23, it says, Then the Lord said, Because of the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom and but Abraham, yeah, Adam. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. He still stood before the Lord. He stood between Sodom and Gomorrah and the Lord. He wasn't apathetic. His his nephew Lot, now he lived in that. I'm not sure if he was apathetic or not, but he was considered a righteous man. And so anyway, then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? He began to intercede for, for uh, Sodom and Gomorrah at that point. He didn't live there. But he saw what was, he knew what was going on there, and he refused to live there. And some people 
will see things going on and they'll refuse to live there. They'll, they'll separate themselves to be righteous before the Lord, even if they're in that area or that region. But, that being said, they may not be interceding until they have a visitation by God. Then they begin to hear a word from God. <coughs> the Lord says, previous to that, shall I hold anything back from Abraham? Shouldn't I tell him what I'm getting ready to do? And Abraham was a prophet of God. And he told him what he was going to do. He was going to destroy it. I'm going to get rid of this. You know, and, and Abraham, he decided, hey, it's time for me to intercede. So he began to intercede on behalf of Lot and any righteous people that were there. And, you know, we can look at Lot. He lived there among those people. His wife, she turned into a pillar of salt because she loved it so much. The daughters, I mean, you know, if you read on, there was incest and all kinds of things that weren't supposed to happen. That ended up happening. But they got their father drunk. I mean, they carried with them that spirit. Yet God still considered Lot righteous. <laughs> I'm just saying that there was a spirit of apathy. Lot saw those things, but he covered his eyes. He had the blinders on. I like living here. This is great. There's all kinds of things to do. But he wasn't praying for those people in that town, in that city. He wasn't pr praying for those things, against those things. He wasn't raising a cry up before the Lord. Their cry was greater than his. He was just enjoying the fruits of what was coming in. And we get that way, Lord. I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but I'm just going to keep going. Praise the Lord. Numbers 14, 6 through 9, it says, And Joshua, son of Num, Nun, and Caleb, the son of uh, Jeconiah, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, the land which we pass through to spy it out is, ex is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their protection is removed from them and the Lord will... And the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. In apathy situations, you begin to believe that the, that the giants of the land are too great to be dealt with. The other people, Joshua and Caleb, knew they could go in there. But the other, the other eight spies said, no, they're too big. And the people listened to them rather than Joshua and Caleb. What happened? They had to wander the wilderness for another 40 years till those people died off. And a new generation could be raised up. God is sending missionaries into these places because he wants to stir his people up to righteousness. When we live in apathy, we're not living in righteousness. We're not living by faith. And we absolutely have to begin to live by faith. We are people of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because we must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. But if all we do is go to church on Sundays and Wednesdays and praise the Lord at that time, but forget about the strangers, we're apathetic. We are absolutely apathetic. When we drive down the road, and we see things that grieve the heart of God, and we don't try to pray for those things to be changed. We're apathetic. When we refuse to help somebody because we believe that they'll never change, we are living apathetically. We are apathetic people. 
Are, are, are we called to holiness and righteousness? Are, are we called to walk in faith? It's Jesus that's going to change these people. Jesus went and sat with them. He never pointed his finger at them and said, Hey, you're a sinner, you're going to hell. <laughs> yeah, he had a thing against religious mindsets. And when we become apathetic... Or we walk in apathy. Or, or we preach apathy to others and teach them how to be apathetic. We become religious. I'm not saying that you should go out and try and save everybody you see on the road. But I'm saying that you need to begin to pray for those things in your region that aren't right. That are allowing things in. Apathy is a doorway to all kinds of sin. And I'm not talking about just homosexuality. I'm talking about other things. Sin's worse. You know, people say sin's a sin and they're all the same. I don't believe that. Uh, John says there's a, there's a sin to life and a sin to death. I think it's John. It might be Paul. One of the apostles in the New Testament. It's one of the epistles. <laughs> Go look it up. <laughs> I'm going to. But I think that God, I think there is a scale for sin. And I think some sins are more weighty than others. And the things, and the things that we consider horrible, God might look at and say something else about that person. Not their sin, but that person. And, and we equate the sin to the person. And so we become apathetic. And we say there's nothing we can do about it. We just shrug our shoulders. We don't ever pray for the person. Or persons. Or the thing. And we allow strongholds to come into people's lives. We allow strongholds to come in our lives. Once apathy is there, it's a gateway. It's a gateway built right over us. And every single person that's apathetic in the body has a gateway. And, and, and it's just a matter of time before you're not seeing anything. Before everything's acceptable. I know this is a long message, but i got to get it out there. And I know it's not perfect, but the Holy Spirit can speak to you through it, Lord. And then in Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, it's finally, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Take on you the whole armor of God that Ye may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand firm there, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. I'm reading a different version here. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We are being told how what we need to do. We need to begin to recognize that things are happening in the Spirit. And God wants to raise up strong men and women. He doesn't care about your age, by the way. Your age has nothing to do with it. Your, the amount of time you've been walking with the Lord has nothing to do with it. <laughs> we, we, we need to begin to uh, get this mindset off of us that if, unless you've been serving the Lord for 30 years, you're not allowed to say anything. You're not allowed to do anything. I've been walking with the Lord for a little over three years. And I have this ministry. I have... A Monday night ministry. I have another ministry. I, I have a testimony ministry. I minister to my church. I do all kinds of things. 
I'm not bragging about myself. I'm just saying that you don't have to be there a certain amount of time. You can be there five days. I was only walking with the Lord for a couple of weeks when the Holy Spirit said, Would you consider volunteering at your church? And I went up to the pastor and I said, Hey, I believe the Lord wants me to do some things around here. Is it okay? Yeah. Nobody else was volunteering. <laughs> yes. Even in my church, there's a spirit of apathy. And I think that the Lord wants to break that. Every church has it. You just need to break through it and see the importance of other people. We need to go to warfare for other people. We don't want to go to warfare for music. We don't want to go to warfare for politics. We don't want to go to warfare for things that don't, at the end of the day, don't mean a single thing. Yet we seem to want to go to warfare for those things. God's calling us to wake up and get out of our apathetic spirit. Wake up, my children. Wake up. See what's going on around you. See the Sodom and Gomorrah that's getting built in the spirit because of the apathy you, my children, hold. I, uh, you know, the shock and awe of where I stayed, it was like, man, I was on edge all the time. It was a spiritual warfare going on around me. There was, I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Pick up your guitar and begin to play. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wanted to go out and start screaming. You guys go! <laughs> Let's just pick up the guitar and start playing. I'm going to bring missionaries into this town. I'm going to wake up my body. You're, 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 you're prophetic. <laughs> First, you're a prototype of what's coming, what's going to come. And we need to begin to see that. Oh, I'm talking long today. We need to begin to see that. Let's not be apathetic. Let's begin to ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. What Lord God, in my life, am I apathetic about? And what needs to be changed, Lord God? Where do I need to repent? Where do I need to begin to pull that stronghold down? How, how can I love others? Because really, at the end of the day, it's others that we're being sent out for. We're, we're to kick the enemy to the curb. But we're to love on those people that the enemy so willingly built his portal of apathy. <laughs> because apathy is, is a portal of spirit and invites others to come with it. I think when the Lord was talking about the, the demonic spirit that got kicked out of its house and it wandered the wilderness and it came back, it brings seven more spirits, more wicked than itself. That's the spirit of apathy. Once apathy comes, it, other spirits can come in because of that apathetic spirit. Because we begin to think, there's nothing I can do about it. If I look at that person, they'll see me. If they see me, then I'll, I'll have to give them a dollar. I don't want to say anything because if I say something, I might offend them. The spirit of apathy looms large in our country, and we need to begin to shake it. We need to begin to get it off of us. Lord, where am I asleep at? I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. I just release you today, and I thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace upon this word. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would, you would bring life to this word. That somebody would hear this word, and it would would affect them, Lord God, and wake them up. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you bless my brothers and sisters today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I haven't played for a couple days. <laughs> you know, the Lord told me to play over people I didn't even know, and I don't really know you guys. I'll meet you someday.
many beautiful things. The most beautiful thing I saw, though, or I should say person I saw, was my grandchildren. They're precious. Spoke to my son about my grandson and just said, hey, you need to close eye on that young man and give him much attention he needs it. It's easy to get apathetic about your own children and say, okay, they're, they're okay, they're quiet, they're watching themselves. But inwardly, they're getting angrier and angrier. Bye.